Meadows of the righteous. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen Amma ba'ad Fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa sahabika ya Habiballah Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah Welcome back to our series The Meadows of the Righteous uh, we have been discussing so many different topics. I hope it has been beneficial for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us ability to understand his religion. Today, we bring you a topic which is not just overlooked, uh, but underrated. Uh, it's it's uh, such a blessing that words cannot kind of, even the mind doesn't understand how big of a blessing this is. Um, and that is simply the... Um, the, the Quran, the Quran al Karim, uh, to just understand that this is the word of God is enough. It's, it's, it's to a creation, the link between the creator and the creation is the Quran. To understand the creator and who he is, you have the Quran. But the amazing thing is that the, the Quran. Is, is, is for us but through it we understand the creator and there's so many different things it brings us so many so many blessings within the Quran and I always bring up this statement the Quran is or the knowledge inside the Quran is like a vast ocean which has no boundaries it doesn't have no shore and it's expert divers that go into the depths of this ocean to the bottom of the riverbed, the seabed and pick up the corals and pick up the um, the pearls out of the oysters and they come back to surface with the pearls and the, the blessings, the corals and different, different benefits of the sea. And the ones who are not experts, but they have love for the Qur'an, then they must just stay around the shallow waters. They can't go further. They can't uh, try to step into a territory that they can not handle. Well, you leave the expert things to the experts and the amateurs stay at the shallow water. And that example is to make you understand that the Qur'an is so deep. And the wisdom and the blessings within it is so amazing that just by picking up or reading it, you're not going to understand it. This is to understand the Quran, you need to study around 15 to 20 different subjects, starting from Arabic, right at the start, from Tajweed and uh, Nahav and Sarf. Um, Balagat is not even halfway to understand the Quran. All the way up to studying business, economics, geography, history, biology, um, business, uh, law, all these topics you need to study as well just to get a, a general understanding of the Quran. The Quran is just such an amazing, amazing uh, book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this nation with. Inshallah, today we're going to go through some of the blessings, uh, some of the points um, that have been made about reading the Quran, befriending the Quran, being attached to the Quran. I'll start off with the hadith the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "Iqra al Quran," that you recite the Quran, recite the Quran. Fa inna hu yati yom al qiyamati shafi'an. On the day of judgment, it will come. For its friends as a intercessor, it will intercede for its friends. The Quran has friends. Who are the friends of the Quran? Who are who is the companion of the Quran? Inshallah, we'll discuss that. Another narration, Prophet says, the best of all people is that person who 
learns the Quran and teaches the Quran. The best of all people is the one, the best of all jobs, the best of all uh, lifestyles is the one who learns the Quran and teaches the Quran because the Quran is the word of God. Quran is the word of God. There are four types of people. The Prophet ﷺ says that example of a believer who recites the Quran is like that of a, a citron, a type of fruit. Prophet ﷺ says that the scent of this, the fragrance of this fruit, he has, he has a nice fragrance. And even the taste, so the taste and the fragrance is both beautiful. So the inside and the outside is adorned with this fragrance. That's an example of a believer who actually implements the Quran. He has this fragrance, this aura, this beauty emanating from him, and his inside is pure as well. A second type, an example of a believer who doesn't read the Quran, it's like that of a, a, a date, a, a tamar. A, La rihalaha, it doesn't have a scent, however, the taste is sweet. The taste is sweet. That's the believer who doesn't read the Quran. The example of a hypocrite, the person, the hypocrite who recites the Quran, is like the example of uh, the basil plant. Rihuha tayyib wa ta'muha murr that its, its perfume, its scent is pure, clean and refreshing, but its interior, its taste is sour and bitter. That's the example of a munafiq, a hypocrite who recites the Quran. And lastly, that the example of the munafiq which doesn't recite the Quran is like a hanzala, hanzala, colosynth. Uh, he doesn't have no smell and its taste is bitter as well. Uh, so there's four types of people categorized. Um, Furuz is the one who recites the Quran and is a believer. He's a believer and he recites the Quran. His exterior and his interior is beautiful. Another narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, لا حسد إلا في That jealousy, jealousy, that it's wrong. Jealousy is wrong, first of all. But even if it was right, it would only make sense in two things. Number one, a man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the knowledge of the Quran. And he recites or goes through this. He, he implements this day and night. So that's number one, that if you're going to be jealous of something, be jealous of the person who has the knowledge of the Qur'an and he goes and implements it day and night. He stands by it day and night. Number two, وَرَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا And a man who has been given significant amount of wealth, فَهُوَ يُنْفِقُهُ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَآنَاءَ النَّهَارَ And he spends it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day constantly in the day and in the night he's constantly spending it in the way in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're going to be jealous you're going to be jealous of these two types of people number one was the Quran the knowledge of it and he's constantly standing by it and preaching it teaching it number two he has wealth loads of it and he's spending it building madrasas helping Muslims around around the world uh, this constant uh, Spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving it to an orphan, giving it to a yateem. There are two people to be jealous from. When everyone is taken out of the graves, the Quran will be there ready to support the dead person, the reciter. Um, on the time of questioning Hisab and Kitab, the Quran will be there to help him, to protect him. On the bridge of Sirat, the Quran will protect him and help him over the bridge of Sirat. Hatta all the way up until he enters into Jannah, the Qur'an is with him all the way. I mean, if you really want a friend, if you really want a friend, then I think the best of friends is the Qur'an because your friends in the dunya leave you, your friends in the dunya betray you. There's no real benefit from them. 
It's not that invested. You cannot invest in your friends. But the Quran is that friend that you can invest in. Quran is that friend that will not betray you. Quran is that friend which will take you past all obstacles. Quran is that um, scripture that was sent to the best of all creation. Uh, Muhammad Rasulullah This Quran, sometimes we forget the power and the strength of it. Sometimes we think, okay, I read Quran in my namaz, is this enough? X, Y, Z. Sometimes just opening up the Quran and reading, even if it's a small surah, doesn't have to be uh, 15 pages at once. Just opening it up, reading one verse with the translation and the commentary. That's it. Amir al Sunnah says three verses every single day. So when we say read the Quran, it doesn't mean that you're on this rapid, uh, intense kind of training program where you're going to read the full 30 sparas in one week. No. What I mean is take it easy. Read it slowly, gently. Take your time. Understand it. Understand this. Every verse, every word. Understand what guidance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to give you. Make notes of that. Things you find interesting, write it down. Things you find interesting, tell someone. Quran is a powerful, powerful book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the ones who constantly recite the Quran, make us from the ones who um, could read the Quran, make us from the ones who respect the Quran, implement the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live in accordance to the Quran. May He allow us to die believing in the Quran and may He resurrect us with the Quran. For the sake of the Quran, Amin Bijahi Nabi Jalameen, Sallu Alil Habib, Sallallahu Ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meadows of the Righteous, 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 Meadows of the Righteous.